G'day mate and welcome to Oxford Not Included with me and Jenny. I've actually got Frankie here with me today to try and explain how pips work. Now pips are a new critter that was added to Oxford Not Included recently and they allow us to take seeds and plant them in natural tiles to give us wild plants again. So as you can see all these arbitraries up here, they're actually all um, they're all being planted in the wild. None of them are domesticated, so therefore I don't have to put irrigate, uh, I don't have to add polluted water and dirt to them. Each one of these was actually planted by a pip. And as you can see, I've managed to get a nice neat row of them along here. Um, in fact, the row is so neat that rather than these guys having, you know, three, three lots of lumber on one side, three lots of lumber on the other side with the lumber at the top, um, these are actually parked in so close to one another that I can't get the maximum yield out of any of them because I over, I overpopulated the area. Every single one of these was actually planted by pips um, rather than by a dupe or, or by via debug mode. I'll actually go through how I did the planting shortly. First thing I wanted to show you is actually how to contain the pips so they can't get out. I actually got Frankie here who, as we can see, can move through this extended water lock to get him out of this area. Meanwhile, as you can see, all the pips are stuck on the ground. None of them have wandered over here. None of them have wandered out of the room um, because they can't pass through this many tiles of water. Um, I actually think I can make it probably one tile shorter, but it's more than enough to keep the, the pips enclosed for a change. No need for doors or anything like that. I just keep them locked in this room. Uh, what I actually did is to force the pips to plant the way I want, you can use ladders and different obstacles to make sure the pips plant basically in the tiles you want. Um, if I bring up this overlay, you can see that still some of my arbitraries are, are less than perfect, but they are 100% wild. Um, and, you know, th they're doing an all right job of, of getting the maximum branches out of each one of them. Um, but let's start off with what we can plant into. So we can plant into basically anything with a very soft uh, marker or a soft marker um, when it comes to our digging surfaces. So I've got like coal, uh, fertilizer, copper, dirt, of course. Um, we've got some salt here, some phosphorus, which I don't think you can actually make in the game. Um, that might only be something I can do in debug mode. Uh, phosphorite, abyssalite, as you can see, I tried to get them planted in abyssalite. All the seeds are right up here. They haven't touched them. We've got mafic rock. So you can go out and plant in the spi uh, space biome. I also have some fossil up here in case you feel really energetic and you really want to spend some of your precious fossil on some plant tiles. Uh, clay, sand, and regolith. Um, yeah, algae and slime. So that's our that's the list I came up with. There might be a few more that I missed, but that was the list I came up with. And as you can see, in every single one of these surfaces, except for the abyssalite, because it is the digging harness of um, 150. It's way too hard for Ghibli's dig to dig through. That means it's also way too hard for uh, the pips to plant the seeds in. Um, the pips, the pips are a little bit funny. They plant plants according to how many other plants are in the same um, in the same local area. And this is sort of where they scan. If this is the tile they're looking to plant a seed in, they count right, they count up, they count left, and they count down. And they actually count down a very long way, and they count to left a very, very long way. Um, up and right are fairly short distances. And this is how I've been able to mani manipulate the, the pips to plant the arbitraries the way I wanted them to. So, um, Normally, I'd recommend if you want to plant a farm, you want to sort of work from right to left and from top to bottom, just because of the way it scans. If you're working from the bottom up, you're going to have to have a very, very large gap between one row of um, farm up tiles and another row of farm tiles if you want to plants, if you want the plants to be put down in the wild, if, if you're happy to, to you know, to plant a row of domesticated in the middle, that might work. Um, I actually haven't tested that one. But yeah, if you work uh, right to left, top top to bottom, you should be fine. So let's get on with our experiment. So I have, uh, actually, here's a perfect example. I have a stack of uh, ar um, arbor acorns here. And as you can see, these pips are just wandering around. They, they actually have been refusing to plant these guys. Because down here, I actually have some mealwood down here. 
and it's within the radius of um, the top to the bottom, which is, where are we? Eight tiles down. That's nine tiles down, so it's eight tiles there. It's within, ooh. Uh, that didn't work. Put that seed back up there. Uh, it's within eight tiles down and seven tiles, no, six tiles to the left. Yeah, six tiles to the left. So if we go from that tile and I go eight by six, uh, there's already two plants down here. So they will refuse to plant up here uh, in this tile no matter what. So we're in a new experiment or a new clear spot. As you can see, I'm planting in dirt because dirt's nice and easy. I'm also showing you guys how to put in some dirt. And uh, first thing we're going to need is mealwood. Mealwood's nice and simple. Uh, and we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seeds should be more than enough. And at the same time, we're going to go for pips. Realistically, um, one pip should be enough. Uh, it'll just take longer. In my case, I'm going to go for a full barrage of 10 as well. I'm going to drop them all here. And I'm going to turn on the debug speed so things happen as fast as possible. And we should see that hopefully a pip up. Oh, get rid of that. I had, I had some seeds down here. Uh, so, as we can see, we already have our very first mealwood growing. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deconstruct the ladder segment beside it, which is now going to unblock that one tile. Same story, I just got another mealwood planted. We'll do the next tile. And there's the next, next one planted. Now, I'm going to deconstruct the next two. And as you can see, the pips have really no interest. Even when I go three tiles along, they still have no interest in planting these three tiles. If I deconstruct this next tile, hopefully we'll have a pip come along and drop it. There we go. We have yet another mealwood. So again, deconstruct. Just clean out the next tile. That's been planted. Next tile. Uh, we'll clear another gap of three. And our fourth one. And our fifth one. Uh, deconstruct. Our next three. Our fourth one. Our fifth one. We're out of seats. There you go. So I have, if we bring up the harvest overlay, I have planted in nice sets of three brand new mealwood. Um, in fact, I lost some seeds somehow. Three, six, nine. No, that's ten. That's how many we dropped down in the first place. So, using ladders to block their options of where they can plant things is very, very easy. Um, you could use solid tiles. Um, in my case, I just like using the ladders because they cost less duplicate time to build and to deconstruct. And realistically, the pips can pass straight through them, so it's going to get them moving around and across their spots faster. If I put in a water lock left and right, as I did with my arbitraries, they would only be passing across the top, so it means that there's more there's more chances that the pips will pass over the area I I, I want in particular to replant uh, to plant um, my seeds. Lastly, I have uh, I'm gonna go through the obvious question, uh, Devon. Uh, Devon. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go through the obvious question. Like, if I've dug up everything, how do I then go back and make natural tiles? And this one, it took me a little while to think about of a way, but turns out actually it's really, really easy. So what I actually have down here is I have slime. Slime is fairly easy to get on most of the asteroids. It's it's not easy to get on all of them, but you can always go through the effort of using uh, puffs to uh, spawn some, um, no, just spawn some puffs, you know, get, get some puffs in either through the printing pod or get some and hold on to them, give them some polluted dirt to eat on and let them excrete, excrete slime. Take the slime and we're gonna put that on a conveyor rail. And as you can see here, I have this conveyor rail, which just has a conveyor bridge on the end of it. And the reason, the only reason that actually has that on there is to make sure that all these conveyor slots actually have a direction to path. So we've got slime on every one of these tiles, uh, every one of these, um, Conveyors, as you can see, it's normally about 20 kilos minus whatever they've off-gassed. 
Yeah, they might have off-gassed a little bit. They might have off-gassed a lot. In fact, unfortunately, I'm going to have some blank tiles here. So I had some blank um, 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 conveyor rail packages. So I'm just using an auto sweeper uh, into a conveyor lo loader. I could use allow manual use and have Devon top it up. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need some hot liquid. So we're going to go make a whole bunch of steel. And put Devon to work. Uh, we'll get rid of that. And we'll go up to hyperspeed. Because I just need some really hot oil. Like 250 degrees. Yeah, that's probably hot enough. Okay. So we're going to come out of super speed. Yeah, we got 190 odd degree oil. And I'm just going to open that valve up and close that valve down. And as you can see, I'm dropping in some 110 degree, 120 degree oil, not too hard. And if we go over to our conveyor overlay, we can see that this slime's heating up to 120 odd degrees and then disappears off the conveyor rail. and went up with dirt instead. Um, in fact, each one of these conveyor rails only has 20 kilos of slime on it. And it's very, very quickly converting into 20 kilos worth of, uh, worth of dirt. And as you can see, I can build out these tiles, yeah, build out rooms as big as I want. In my case, I actually made the room four tiles big to start with. It turns out it should have been probably five tiles because I'm going to put in one for the ground. But four times tiles times 30 would give me in a room overlay, it would actually let me, let me put down a nature reserve. Um, so I could very, very quickly, like, have the oil go along, make all these, convert all these tiles over to dirt. Once that's done, open the area up, um, mop up the oil. It's a little bit of a mess, but that's perfectly fine. Remove all the conveyor rails because they're now useless. Uh, at the same time, no, we've still got, it's the same little bit of oil that's in there. Uh, it's probably finally, no, it's the 130 degrees. It's still warm enough to keep propagating along. Um, as you can see, it's only a little bit of oil. It's like 30 kilos per tile. Um, it's not a whole lot. You could probably do with another run of the machine. Um, just to get that last little bit of dirt. Oh, there we go. It's running a little bit more now. So yeah, this is a very, very quick, e easy way to propagate out your dirt. And then all you got to do is repopulate the area with both pips and seeds, have them go plant everything. And then once you're done, um, you know, and, and cleaned up everything, move the pips onto the next room and convert or convert them into their, their meteor form. And um, you can make a nature reserve, a, a, uh, a nature reserve, a... Uh, a greenhouse, um, whatever room you require, wherever, with natural tiles planted by pips, which means less maintenance for the dupes. Anyway, that's really where I'm going to leave this pip video. I um, hope it was helpful for you guys. As always, if it was, uh, if it was actually helpful, keep, click the like button. Um, at the same time, if you're finding these sorts of videos helpful, these sorts of quick tutorial videos, by all means, click the subscribe button. Maybe we'll actually work out what we can do with lumber in the next episode and get an actual natural ethanol farm going. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.